All right, the 12,000 XP. A lot of people want to know, hey, is this thing going to work off of one battery? Bottom line is, it's required to have 400 amp hours. So, you know, try to have enough batteries so you have 400 amp hours. That's basically going to be the four of the server rack batteries, or you're going to have to have two of the wall mount batteries just to give it that 400 amp hour mark. But a lot of people, hey, they can't afford to get two batteries at the, you know, when they first get the inverter, and they just want to know, hey, what's going to run off this thing with just one battery if you do happen to do it? I'm not telling you to do it. It is definitely not recommended. Follow the manual. But we're just going to do the test for people that are probably going to do it anyway. So let's go ahead and turn all the batteries off except for our one indoor Power Pro battery. And then just run some loads on this 12,000 XP and see what it does. All the batteries are off except for the indoor Power Pro battery. So let's go ahead and start a load. Basically the load I'm going to start is over here, this little heater over here on the wall. It's probably about 5,000 watts. Let's go ahead and start that to see if it'll run by itself. All right, I went on ahead and started that heater. Let's see what it does. So the inverter's showing 4,856 watts. All right, as you can see, I got a couple of heat guns here. I'm gonna go ahead and sit these here and start both of these. And then I'm gonna start that and we'll see what we get. I'm gonna go ahead and start that heater. Then I'll come back and start the heat guns. All right, got the heater going. And I got both the heat guns going. Let's see what we're pulling. It's like 7,200 watts right now. All right, as you see right here, we got 7,203 watts coming out. So not bad for one of the Power Pro batteries, 280 amp hours. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, got this little heater here. Let's go ahead and plug that in to see if we can take it over and knock this thing out. And what I'll probably do is record on the indoor Power Pro uh, screen to show you how many amps is coming out of that thing. Because I think it, I think it's rated to do about 200 amps. All right, let's go ahead and start everything up. I'm gonna start the heater, both the heat guns, and then that heater over there. All right, 8,612 watts, and we got a notice on here. It's probably because we're pulling too many amps from the battery. Let's go ahead and turn it off to see what the notice is. Now, the e we got a notice on here. The EPS output didn't kick out. It was still kicking out power. I just want to go ahead and turn it all off so we can click on the notice here and see what we got. The notice probably went away once I turned everything off. If it was the discharge amps, which it probably was. So now it's back in normal. So it's probably the discharge current. That's probably what was causing it. But we'll look on the screen and do this again to see what the uh, amps are. And we'll see if that's why it goes in the alarm and the notice comes on. And then I'll turn one of the heat guns off to see if it goes back out and see what the amps are at that time. Let's go ahead and try it again. And remember, we're doing this all off this one battery. That's why you're going to get that alarm. You need 400 amp hours to be able to get the full rate of the inverter. All right, got it going again. All right, 8,620 watts. And, of course, we got a notice right now. And as you see, we got 151 amps. Let's go ahead. I turned one of the heat guns off. And let's update it again, and let's see what we got. At a negative 151 amps, it's in no, it's in a, a notice. Now at 123 amps, as you see, it's in normal. So I guess when it goes above that 150 amps, you're going to get a notice. It's not going to kick it out. And I guess when you get to 200 amps, it's probably going to kick that battery out, and then your loads and your whole inverter is going to kick out. So let's see if we can get it up to that mark. So definitely pretty interesting so far, as you were able to see, 123 amps getting pulled out. It's in normal at 151 amps. I guess when it gets over that 150, you get a notice. So it didn't kick anything out. It's just telling you, hey, this battery's pulling pretty hard. And I'm going to try to see if we can get this thing up to 200 or over 200 to get it to kick out. And then we'll see, hey, what we'll be able to pull full load. You don't want to work a battery this hard. This is just for a test. You need to try to get two batteries. And to me, if you are going to do it and just have one, you know, you probably should run it less than 6,000 watts with a 12,000 XP. That way, you know, you're not going to have any problems and you're not going to be working the battery that hard. The more batteries you have, the less of a C rate they're going to be discharging and charging, you know, so it's going to be better for the battery long term. I'm going to start this car charging. All right. As you can see right now, it's saying it's pulling a uh, 34.8 amps out. And I guess that's just a uh, run into the unit. So let's go ahead and start this car. I got about 6,500 watts coming out and about 94 amps, as you can see. 
So we're going to go ahead and start this heater. See if we can get this thing over that 200 amps. And it already kicked out before I could get back to the screen to update it. But as you may have been able to see, we're pulling out 11,000 and some watts. But it was already over 200 amps. And of course, that's going to make this stuff kick out. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. All right, as you see, we got the notice. And let's go ahead and click on that to see what it says. And it's going to say EPS overload. So... It's going to say EPS overload, probably because we're overloading the amps on the battery. So let's see if it goes back to normal. It's going to update on its own. And it looks like the battery just kicked back on. Let's see if the inverter kicked back on. The output is still not on. All right, as you can see right here, we're on the specs for the indoor power wall battery, the 280 amp hours. And when we go down here, we can see right here, it's going to say charging current and discharging current. Max continuous is 200 amps. We were already over 200 amps. The recommended is 160 amps. So you know, that's why the thing is went over. So when it goes over 205 amps, it can do it for 10 seconds. I mean, when it's less than 205 amps, it can do it for 10 seconds. When it's less than 225, it can do it for three seconds. So we were at 207 that I saw when I was looking at the battery and it was still going up when I tried to go to the inverter. So that's why the thing kicked out. Had nothing to do with the inverter it's just a battery because you need that 400 amp hours so people want to know how this thing was going to do off the one battery your 280 amp hour uh power wall battery because a lot of people hey they can't afford to get to them at one time you're not gonna be able to run it at the full rates it's gonna kick out and of course when you're running really high it's not gonna be as good for the battery so i just recommend if you are gonna do that you know me personally i try to get two batteries but if you are gonna do it try to run it at less than 6,000 watts coming out of the inverter here that way it'd be just like it will be when you have two batteries and you know you're running at max capacity and like i said i can't recommend that because that's not what's recommended in the, in the procedure but if i was doing it that's what i would do and remember if you're interested in this eg4 12000 xp i'm going to be doing a whole lot of videos on this thing a whole series one little thing answering people's questions so if you got a question or a comment hey let me know that down below and i'll try to make a video of it and of course, I have this thing linked up down in the description. If you use code RodneyHunt50, you know, you get a small $50 discount off the inverter. Plus, I make a small commission. That's how I'm able to get stuff like this and do these tests for you before you go and spend your hard-earned money on one of these inverters. And I really want to thank all my channel members out there. So if you're a channel member, I appreciate it. And remember, if you like this kind of video, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, and thanks for watching.